So let's say in the web book, we are receiving an email. We use that email to absurd this contact. Hello guys, welcome back to High Level Techie. And today I'm going to show you how you can use N8N with GHL. So if you're not familiar with N8N, it is very similar to Zapier, Fably Connect, and Make.com, but on another level. N8N in itself is a beast. If you're planning on learning N8N, it is going to take a lot of time. So my intention today is to show you the basics of N8N when you are using with GHL, okay? So let's get started. So in this screen, you can see a canvas where you build out automations. And I have a couple of nodes here. This is a trigger node, and these are the action nodes. So if you want to add a new node, what you can do is you can right click and click on add node. That will open up a window on your right hand side or otherwise you can also click on this plus icon and then this window will open up. Alternatively, you can press tab on your keyboard and this window will open up anyway. So here you can search for high level if you want to add the high level node. And I have already added one high level node, but I'm just going to add one more node here. And then you have a bunch of actions here and select that action that you want to use. So for example, I'm going to use create or update a contact action here. And I click on this and a new node will be added. And this is the additional settings for that node. Now, if you want to go back, you can click on back to canvas and then you can see this is the node that I just added, but we will not be using this node and I'll tell you why in a minute. So if you double click on this node, you will be taken inside this node to add additional settings. And the first one is to select a credential. So you need to add a credential for this to work. And when you click here, you can create a new credential. When you are going to add a new credential, it is going to ask you for OAuth, redirect URL, authorization URL, client ID, client secret, scope, etc. And this is something that you can create using GHL marketplace and creating an app and then you would get the client ID client secret and scope and all that So creating a token in OAuth and and creating a marketplace app are a kind of complicated Process and that is not what I'm going to discuss today I'm going to show you a simpler version where you can use GHL's private integration key and connect your GHL API directly inside NA10. Okay, so we will close this and we go back to canvas and we don't need this so we can delete this and we are going to delete this node as well and now we are going to focus on something called http request so you can add a new node here and search for http request and the first one you can select and this is where you can actually use go high levels api version 2 so now i'm going to show you how you can use this to book an appointment using go high levels api version 2 if you already seen my previous videos, you know what we need to do now. We have to go into Go High Level API version 2 documentation, which you can find at highlevel.stoplight.io slash docs. So if I scroll through this, I can find calendars here. And inside the calendar folder, I can find multiple calendar endpoints. And this is the get free slot, which is a get method to get the free slots what we are interested in is to create an appointment so we have to look for create appointment endpoint and that is you can find it under calendar events and then you can find here create appointment this is a post request to this endpoint using this body so what we have to do is you have to copy this whole url you have to look at the header and then you have to find out the content for this body as well so let me show you how you can send this post request, okay? So let's start fresh. So I'm gonna add a new node and select HTTP request. And this opens up, then I can select the post request and then I can go back and copy this URL. I can paste it in here. So then I need the authentication, but we are not going to use any of the authentication here. What we are going to do is set the authentication in the header itself. So for that, we need the header. So we have to select send header and we have to type in the name value pair for that header. So in order to find that, we go back to our documentation 
Now we have here authorization, which is the key. And then the value for that key is this something like this, which is the private integration key. So we come back here and we put the name as authorization and value as bearer and whatever starts with pit, which you can create using your private integration key. So if you don't know how to create a private integration key, it's pretty straightforward. You have to go into your sub account settings and then find private integration key. And then you create a new private integration key by selecting the appropriate scopes. In order to book an appointment, you probably need the scopes of view calendar, edit calendar, view calendar events, edit calendar events, and so on. I have another video explaining all these process in detail. You can check that out. So once you create that private integration key, you would get a key, something like pit and hyphen and some random numbers. You just come back and, and copy that key in here. That would add the header authorization. And now we need another header parameter. So for that, we go back in here and we can see we need the version and copy that and copy the value of this version as well from here. So we come back here, add a new parameter and this is going to be version and the value is going to be this, okay? So that takes care of our two header parameters authorization and version. Now what we need is the body parameters and all of these are the parameters that we can include in this request, but some of them are required. So if you scroll down, you can see these four are required parameters such as calendar ID, location ID, contact ID, and start time. Okay, so the easiest way to do this would be to copy the whole thing from here and scroll down and send body you toggle that on and you can and you have a couple of options either you can send as a form data json or raw data so what we are going to do is select json then you have other options such as using the field you can type in the field like we did here for header but what we are going to do is we are going to select using json and then we can paste the raw format here, like so. And now what we are going to do is we are going to remove all the unwanted things or not required fields, such as all of this until we find calendar ID. So we want a title for the appointment and then calendar ID, location ID, contact ID, start time, End time is not really required. If you have a start time, that's more than enough. And as soon as I removed that last line, you can see there is a red dot, which says that there is an error. Now, if you look at this formatting, you can see there's a comma at the end. So JSON formatting should never have a comma at the end. So you remove that and the error will be gone. So now we have a sample data that we want to send we can edit this data with the actual data but for out of curiosity if you really want to test this out to see if it is working or not you can simply click test step and then you would see that some of the errors would pop up you can see authorization failed please check your credential so and then if you open this up you can see invalid private integration token so that is a full error message so from this, we know that the private integration token we used is wrong. And that is correct because we know that this is not a valid private integration token. So that is the first error that we need to rectify. So now I have already created a sample uh, node that is working. So we are going to head back to that node. So this is the node. So in here, I can click on test step. And you can see there is also a bad request error. And if I open this up, you can see that the slot you have selected is no longer available. So that is the error that I'm coming across. So the slot or the time that I requested in my body is no longer available. So the only error you can see here is that I don't have availability on my calendar, which is true. Everything else is working properly. So now you can see this is how you can send an HTTP request inside N8N.
but now the thing is that we cannot use this as it is because the problem is that here the contact id is a static value this is not dynamic so we can we can only use this for a certain contact with this contact id but in an automation scenario we want this to be more dynamic so how can we make this more dynamic okay so that's what we are going to see now so what we are going to do is that we go back to our canvas and we are going to add a new item in front of this and this is also going to be http request and in this request what we are going to do is we are going to absurd a contact okay if you don't know what it is so we go back to our api doc and then look for contacts so if you search for contacts then you can find a lot of uh, endpoints here but what we are interested in is called upset a contact okay so upset means that if there is a contact already existing it is going to update that contact if there is no such contact with the email or phone number it is going to create a new contact so that's the beauty of upset endpoint you don't have to worry about like finding the contact and then updating if there is no contact then create a new contact and such all you have to do is send this actual data such as email or phone number to this endpoint and if it is a new data it will it is going to create a new contact if it is an existing data it is going to update that existing contact pretty cool right that's why i mostly use upset contact so we click on this upset contact this is also a post request and this is the url so we head back to our n810 and then we what we are going to do is that we are not going to build everything from scratch what we are going to do is just simply remove this and i'm going to duplicate this so that i get all the bearer code and everything and then i can connect this and connect this and i can remove this so now i have something in between the trigger and appointment booking request and if i go in all I have to do is that replace this URL with this URL and then you come back authorization and version should be correct you need authorization you need a version so we don't have to do anything with that now we need if you scroll through this you can see there is only one required field which is the location ID everything else is an optional parameter but what we are going to keep is email and the location id so that whenever there is a new email address we can check if that's an existing contact or not and then we can take appropriate action so let's go here and we have header is already set everything is working so now what we're going to do is that we remove this contact ID and start time and remove the last comma as well and then instead of calendar ID what we are going to add is email and for testing purposes I'm going to type in random email let's say random at example.com okay so if there is a contact with this email address it is going to update this it is going to update certain things that we add in this body but we don't really need anything to update all we need is get the contact id if it's an existing contact or if it is a new contact we want to create a new contact and generate that contact id and use that contact id in the next step okay so i'm going to test this step there are a couple of things that can happen if the if everything is correct this will going to run and if something is wrong and most probably there will be something wrong because uh, this private integration key might not have contact scope in it so it can come back as an error let's see what happens so i'm going to test this step so, so to my surprise everything is correct you can see there is a new contact id has been created for this random at example.com so the email is random and everything else is blank 
So this is a new contact and the contact ID is this, okay? So now we got a contact ID. So let's go back to our canvas and see how we can use the contact ID from this step in the next step, okay? So if I open this, this is where we are sending the appointment request. And on the left hand side, you can see the input from, you can use the input from HTTP request two, which is the previous request. And you can see the email example.com and the contact ID here. So what we are going to do is that we are going to replace this contact ID, right? With this contact ID. So all you have to do is that drag and drop it in here between this double quotes and now that did not go in there so what we have to do is we have to copy that in paste that back in okay so that's what we have to do now we can run a test again and again the slot is no longer available that's all good if there was a slot this should ideally work okay now there are so many things you can do you can actually bring in other things like ai modules or you can use different trigger steps here as well so if i remove this trigger and i'm gonna add a new step so if i click on here to add a first step this could be a webhook coming in or it could be a manual trigger or some app event so for example if it's an app event you can go in and select any of the apps and if something happens on this app you can trigger something in high level using this http request okay so but i think most of the use case would be having a webhook in the beginning as a trigger so the trigger could be catching a webhook so you can have a data on some platform and you can send a webhook to this certain webhook address and then an a 10 webhook can catch the data and parse the data into the next steps okay so this could be the webhook and this is a get request and then all you have to do is that copy the webhook url and and paste it in on whatever platform that you're using so that will be the first step and then we just need to connect it and our automation is ready to go. So we don't really need this last step. We can delete that. And we can also rename the steps. So this is HTTP request, but to upset contact in GHL. So let's say in the webhook, we are receiving an email. We use that email to upset this contact so that we can generate a contact ID. Using that contact ID, we can go in here and and we can book a ghl appointment using this http request so in here we have a bad request because we don't have the date now we can also replace this static date with with an incoming date from our webhook so a lot of things can be done, but this is just the basics of how you can use N8N with GHL using a private integration key. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help. So that's all for today. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and bye.